This is Chris Kell with your Peak Trainer 1 Strength Circuit Demonstration. All right, when we're talking about our strength circuits, generally we're going with two strength circuits for general population clients. All right, we're always going to start out with our main lifts. All right, when we talk about main lifts, again, we want to put the most important things first in the session. Okay, so generally our main lifts are going to be big multi-joint exercises that are geared to get the client stronger. The, um, the goal with these exercises, think of these as the drivers of everything else that we do. All right, these are the things that are going to get the client stronger that regardless of what they're doing, you know, going to increase their force. And these are truly the ones that we want to strength train. So we want to progressively increase either weight or reps or get some sort of progress from these with every session. Okay, so some examples of that um, would be something like a chin up, right? I'm going to give you the examples that we used in our, um, our, our sample template that we, we give out here. The chin up is a multi-joint exercise, right? It's using um, every major muscle in my upper body, some to stabilize, some to move, but this is one that I really want to ingrain with many of my clients as a foundation movement that I visit and revisit to get the person stronger over many years, right? So think about keeping the shoulder blades down and back. I would have the person perform in the beginning, you know, whatever prescribed rep range, right? So if we set six to eight reps, and I do nine, that means that for the next circuit, I would move to just a body weight chin, okay, where I'm just coming up and down, you know, with that, you know, and, and with, if, if I could do more than eight there, you know, then we could start to, to incorporate um, progression somehow, whether it be adding weight or maybe having the person holding their legs out in front. The point is that it's getting harder um, or, you know, or we add some way to do it. One, one, uh, one technique that we commonly like for people that are having trouble maybe getting the full eight chin-ups is we'll break it up into sets of two. We'll have them do two chin-ups, rest for maybe 25 to 30 seconds, do two more, and then again, just break those things up. They would progress um, once they were able to do the full eight together. Okay, so those are little micro progressions, and you'll see that with a lot of these lifts, especially for beginners, is that they just don't seem to have the, they might have the strength to get two or three, they just don't seem to have the, the endurance to control. Okay, and this is common, um, and so the, this method is called clustering sometimes, and that's something that I highly recommend. So think about maybe um, rather than doing two, a progression would be to do three, you know, and then three. So eventually, you know, maybe they do a set of six, rest for 30 seconds and do two, and then on the, then on the next workout they do the full eights. Okay, but that's a kind of a micro progression that you can use to move through this, um, some of your clients. Now, um, another, what we can, would consider main exercise, would be a goblet squat. All right, the goblet squat, um, this is the starting progression for all of our clients on the squat exercise because um, you know, the goblet position helps me to engage my core a little bit better, sit back, um, you know, and you'll notice that I'm squatting back to a box here, right? It teaches the client to sit back on their heels, to see their butt off the bad dance move, and to ingrain that proper squat form, tap, and come back up. All right, now, we can progress this in either one of two ways. All right, I can add weight or I can increase the range of motion because ultimately I want the client to get, be able to get down parallel with good form. So now, okay, I've increased, I've progressed. So if I can do more than eight with the blue pad, I move the pad away. If I can still do that, okay, then maybe I put more weight in the client's hand. But generally we're progressing range of motion first and then we start to increase external loading. All right, the progression for this would be, and I, with progression, it's not just the weight that we use, it's the implements that we use as well. We would progress from a goblet squat, you know, we, we might get the client up to, we have up to 80 pound dumbbells in our gym, so we would go up to the 80, and then we would start to progress into a front squat where we put a barbell on their, um, the front of their, their shoulders, came into either a clean grip or a cross grip, and again, taught them to, you know, utilize this, so again, there are different ways to progress, and you know it's not always going to be simply adding weight. Just based upon the client, do what makes sense. All right, if the client hits a point of diminishing returns with the squat, maybe move them to a single leg exercise where they don't need to necessarily hold as much weight to create stress in one side or the other. So there are a lot of ways to skin a cat. All right, but the point is that we're revisiting exercises like the squat, like the deadlift, like the chin up, like the push up and the bench press to act as the drivers of everything else. Now the other key um, with the strength training is that we want to pack as much stuff into these circuits as possible, all right? And they are circuits. So with, uh, with our strength circuits, I'm doing two major lifts, all right? And then I'm going to use either anywhere from one or two filler exercises to allow myself to rest and recover, all right? So for athlete, for our, our clients and athletes, 
generally we like to place in um, exercises of special need. Um, that's, those are going to consist of balance exercises, mobility, core, whatever they need. But a common example would be something like Spider-Man. So say we looked at a client who lacked rotation in their hips, right? What I would do is, as their filler exercises, I'm going to place in a Spider-Man, okay, again, which is kind of increasing hip rotation. Okay, on one side, I would do 10 on one side, 10 on the other side. And then I would move something like a plank where we're working in non-competing areas. Okay, so what that allows me to do is I'm working on you know, mobility in specific targeted areas, and then I'm working on core stability. Two things the client also needs while they're resting. So we're getting in as much density as possible. That makes the training program more dense. We can train a lot of things at once, and this starts to allow us to do things to address our movement screen and uh, get more in and increase value of the session. Now for our second circuit, which would be what we call our auxiliary circuit, we call it auxiliary because at this point, the client is going to be fatigued somewhat. Um, they're not going to be as strong. So the list that we choose for this particular circuit, don't, uh, you know, again, um, should be standing. You know, we want, we want the client to be able to use their extremities and use their full body and all of that. But at the same time, um, they're a little bit easier. They might, uh, they might be things that address a particular need. Um, more single leg exercises in this circuit, more single arm exercises in this circuit, and things that involve more endurance-based training. If I'm doing three to five reps in circuit one, I would be doing something like maybe eight to 12 or six to eight in circuit two to account for that fatigue. With these exercises, it's not as important that we're progressively increasing each workout. It's a bonus and we definitely want to try, but if they don't, you know, these are the ones that um, are going to kind of start to address different things. And these are exercises that can actually change, um, you know, either from every two weeks or week to week. Um, it, we, what we like to do is vary the pattern. So if I'm doing a push-up as my auxiliary pushing exercise in week one where I'm just coming down to the floor, in week two there's no reason why I can't do something like a T push-up. Okay, or in week three I could do a Spider-Man push-up. So the pattern remains the same. But the exercise itself changes. So you can give your clients some variety, you know, and, and that's something that, you know, again, it's an art form. We change what we can and we, we keep what to change and what to keep the same. So for this example circuit, um, what I've chosen is a one arm dumbbell press, ask the client to stay on the floor, push up and come down. All right, a single leg RDL. All right, single leg RDL, starting here. Think about sticking the back leg behind me, pausing for one or two seconds and coming back up. All right, for my fillers, I'm going to do a sideline leg lift. 12 to each side. All right, in a standing wall slide, forward facing, where I'm just sliding up and down, working on uh, you know, the movement of my scapulae or just my, my upper body prehab. But as you can see, again, we get through as much as we can um, of each circuit. Uh, we set a time limit for each circuit. Generally, I'm, I'm going to uh, set more time for the main lifts, less time for the auxiliary lifts. And if we get two sets in for auxiliary, you know, in, in a 10 minute period or whatever we've allocated, we move on. Main lifts, you know, we're going to allocate a little bit more time. But again, if you need to cut out the filler exercises because they just don't seem time efficient, do that. The strength exercises are the main thing, but get in what you can get in, you know, keep the session efficient, but use the use your spare time with this circuit and concept to get more stuff in that's going to increase the value of your session.